All right. Okay. Good morning, all. Uh, we are still waiting for our, for our presenters. Please, can you sit down? Uh, this this session is organized by um, by the NRIs. What we mean by the NRIs, the National Regional uh, Initiatives plus the Youth Initiative. So and uh, is on uh, internet. Uh, I mean emerging issues and uh, policy questions that have been raised on emerging issues, and we are just going to share our experiences and. Uh, uh, some of the things we have done in our regions, and uh, we'll open it up for anybody to to be able to discuss. I'm trying to get the the list. Okay. The 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 workshop. The the thing that was published. Oh, sorry. This thing is not. I've not been on. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry because I'm not the moderator, so I'm just standing in so that we can start discussing. Okay. So if you have, uh, yeah, yeah, from. Room four. There's nobody there. I've been to room seven, nobody's there. Yeah. Sorry, is, is there any interpretation on this session? Any interpretation? Interpretation? Translation? No translation. Okay, all right. It's only in English. Okay. What policy measures should stakeholders, particularly, I'll start again. This is a collaborative session, and it's being organized by the NRIs. We have uh, uh, Albania Youth IGF, Bangladesh, is G Bangladesh here? We have um, um, Bolivia, we have Congo, is Congo here? We have um, DRC, we have France, we have uh, Kenya, we have Nigeria, we have West Africa, West Africa is here, Tunisia, we have Italy, anybody from Italy IGF, and we have Colombia IGF. Then Indonesia and USA IGF, they, they are supposed to be here as well. So the title of the session is this, Impact of Emerging Technologies on National Level, including the present policies, IPv6 implementation, blockchain, and smart cities, smart cities concept. Uh, Intergovernmental arrangement at regional and sub-regional level. So those are the things. Are, are, are you people going? People are going. All right, so let's continue. 
Then the session format is just 60 minutes and we almost have the time. So we have only 30 minutes to discuss. So we'll take up the relevant questions. The first question is how the emerging technologies can accommodate the needs of society instead of balance. What are the roles and responsibilities in applying emerging technologies? There is no single treatment for applying the emerging technologies. How, how, how to apply this across border? How regional, international collaborate, collaboration may anticipate um, the, uh, the downfall of emerging issues? Then the last one, what policy measures should stakeholders, particularly the government, put in place to ensure that emerging technologies are increasingly being adopted and implemented at the national level? Okay. All right. So for now, we have only two speakers. And so we, all of us are going to do the, answer the questions and do the contribution. So. Speaker is Haru, that's the one I know for now. There should be another speaker from Isaac, from France, IGF, and Afrinic. So we don't have those ones, but we can continue. So now let's take the first question. The first question, Haru, you can come sit, or you want to sit there, that's fine. So if we leave the first question to Haru, can you answer the first question? Policy. How? the emerging technologies can accommodate the needs of society. How can it accommodate the needs of society? What are our needs? What's the needs of the society? How can we apply the emerging technologies to meet the needs of the society? Yes, please. Sorry. Um, the essence is that uh, the question is how can emerging technologies uh, solve the needs of uh, modern society? Yes. Um, it's a diverse question. The major needs of the um, uh, modern society, especially in the developing countries, is um, especially in the area of, uh, let's say, broadband technologies, uh, whereby uh, the broadband penetration in, in Africa, especially, can be a means of enhancing the economy of the people. And uh, secondly, emerging technologies like uh, IOTs uh, will also help in um, enhancing uh, businesses and also in enhancing education and uh, uh, health also. Also, the emerging technologies helps in the developing countries in enhancing the um, transportation system and also health in uh, uh, improving the health and uh, welfare of the people. Um, recently, there is a lot of uh, indication that uh, internet, uh, I mean broadband penetration in the developing countries assisted in um, enhancing the family income. Um, also, uh, there is an indication that uh, the broadband uh, penetration to the rural areas help in enhancing the education and uh, um, information dissemination to people. Also, a lot of indication that Broadband can also be used in agriculture. That is, uh, uh, it can help in agriculture because farmers can get uh, information on uh, their products, uh, the product they grow in their farms, the type of crops to grow, and uh, where to sell their product, and so on. The only, um, the only uh, issue on the emerging technologies is in insecurity. Because there is seriously security and private, uh, privacy challenges of the emerging technologies. So um, let me stop here. I don't know the time I'm allocated. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, I think we have 
very much. We have heard about education, transportation, smart cities, family income being increased by broadband, agriculture, and agriculture. I think we have heard about education, transportation, health, and the welfare of people being increased, and um, um, agriculture. The issue is security. So, what do we do about security? Yes? If you can. Okay. Uh, um, Herman Moudrago, I am the chairman of Burkina Faso IGF. And also, I'm here for the West African uh, Internet Government Forum. Yes, uh, uh, talking about uh, emerging technologies, uh, we, we know that all these technologies uh, generate uh, too much data. For example, uh, if we, we, we take a look about uh, um, the blockchain technologies that can be a useful thing for our uh, society in Africa. I'm thinking about uh, uh, for elections. We have too many uh, company, uh, countries in West Africa will be in election by 2020. And we know every time uh, that some, uh, the result of this election is always a uh, a source of conflictual um, and disorder in this country. So uh, those uh, technology can be used to 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 give uh, like a confidence okay. and a transparency in the elections. So, uh, but the the main thing is the security because uh, we have to to make in place uh, a good strategies uh, and policies to, to, to ensure that the data, the data security first, and also to, to, to bring uh, confidence to the, to, the, to, the, to the population who use it. So too many initiatives uh, already in place with uh, all the national uh, information security uh, society in, every, in too many countries, but uh, uh, the civil uh, society have to, to, to involve in this, in this also to, to ensure the, the, the conf uh, that everything is doing the right, everything is right, and also uh, to, to bring the confidence to the, to the population in these technologies. Okay. Thank you very much. You said everybody should be involved, so what role should this civil society play, the government play, the role of the public sec uh, private sector, mm -hmm. because it's going to be a multi-stakeholder thing. So what will be their roles and responsibilities? Roles and responsibilities. Okay. Um, civil society, okay. you've already said something about civil society. Mm -hmm. So what of government, what role should government play in bringing this, in making sure there's security in in um, emerging technologies, because that's the the, the cross of the matter. Yes, um, I think that uh, the first thing that we uh, the government have to 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 work on is we have to make education. Okay. Yes, because uh, we have to 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 master these technologies and also have the the all the, the, the knowledge about uh, how the technology works and also how to secure these technologies. So the government have to, to create some curricula, university curricula, to, to train uh, too much, too much uh, student and too much to have a, a minimum and uh, a critical amount of uh, uh, I mean, experts in these technologies who can uh, themselves take uh, the ownership of this technology. So education is the a main thing. And also, uh, we don't have to, they have to, to develop like uh, local strategies, not only apply uh, because every, as you said, every country and every uh, uh, society 
have his own issues about the security. Yes, so. Thank you very much. Uh, he's saying that government should, uh, one of the things government should do is make sure there's um, education, develop mass, uh, mass um, uh, experts that will take, that will take, that will understand the operation and then put in the security aspect of it. Um, Haru, can you share with us what has happened in Nigeria in terms of emerging technology? What and what has Nigeria put in place? What and what has Nigeria in terms of emerging technologies? Uh, do you have broadband? And if you have broadband, are they, are they being applied? Right? So uh, can you share with us what you, you're doing in Nigeria? Actually, um, in Nigeria, the first and foremost thing to put in place for the emerging technologies okay. is to put broadband infrastructure. And um, in Nigeria, um, within the last uh, three years, um, the broadband internet penetration was only uh, around 10%. Then uh, it doubled within the last three years to now 22%. The Nigerian government realized that um, for the emerging technologies to work, you have to provide all the necessary infrastructures. And then, uh, I mean, you have to provide the necessary broadband infrastructure because most of the emerging technology ride on the broadband infrastructure. And um, the Nigerian government created what is called uh, national broadband policy. And the policy is how to boost and provide all the necessary broadband infrastructure through the country. As I said, this lead to doubling of broadband penetration. And uh, there is an indication that um, the broadband is impacting on uh, several sectors of the economy, as I said earlier, regarding the health, I mean, education, agriculture, transportation, and uh, um, science and technology. And also, um, one of the things that was put in place is the security. One of the major problems uh, in the emerging technologies, not only in Nigeria, is the challenges of cyber security. Nigeria has put in place a number of things. <coughs> Nigeria has put in place Cyber Crime Act um, uh, so that uh, the several uh, issues of uh, cyber crimes can be minimized. And also Nigeria has put in place, okay, Nigeria is now putting in place uh, data protection and uh, regulation laws which will uh, help to protect the uh, citizens. Also, Nigeria has tried to put uh, a number of things in place. Uh, um, a committees were set to drive this, uh, all these processes okay. for, the, for the country. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know there's, there's um, a, a critical internet infrastructure or uh, resource like the IPv6 from IPv4. Um, currently, the IPv6, the adoption has not been as good as it should be. What level of um, adoption do you have in Nigeria? Because if we are going to, 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 to embrace the new technologies, we need, in, with the Internet of Things, with the smart cities, with the AI and all the rest of them, the, the uh, IPv6 is a, a critical resource. What has anything been done uh, uh, in the line of IPv6 in Nigeria? Um, the migration from IPv4 to IPv6, as you said, recently uh, the Nigerian government formed, a, I, formed an IPv6 council. Uh, this council will work in promoting and uh, assisting uh, the organizations for migration from IPv4 to IPv6. And um, the council has already started doing its work by providing capacity building to uh, small and medium scale organizations on IPv6. And um, the, the small and medium scale organizations, some of them have started 
uh, migrating from IPB4 to IPB6. So very limited. Um, I, we cannot assess, as of now, we don't assess to know the percentage of the migration, but uh, there, there is also going to be a, a, an, a, a massive campaign on the migration this year. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, we go to the audience now. We want, to, we want you to share with us what is happening in your country, France. Can we, well, uh, the, the emerging technologies, have you adopted emerging technologies? Uh, are there some policy, government policies, or the, the, uh, the, 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 the other stakeholders in the, in, the, in, the, uh, uh, in the space, whether they are doing other things that will help people migrate, the small and medium scale um, uh, organizations, whether they are. Um, if you have any, please share with us, because that's, that's the essence of the discussion. <clears throat> Let me just, okay, good. I want to ask, uh, yes, uh, uh, <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, so my name is Carlos Varela, and um, I'm from Mexico City. Mexico. Yes. I rather ask two questions. Can I do that? So the first question would be, um, thinking about uh, new technologies, how is um, Nigeria and other African countries um, confronting the possibility of being spied on by technologies. This is, I think this is an important subject, especially for countries like ours that are not so um, ready to defend, to have this uh, enough security to defend us from um, espionage from other countries which can be a commercial espionage, economical espionage. I mean, it doesn't have to be uh, something for Netflix, no? It, it, just, it, it just could be uh, uh, companies competing, governments competing uh, to do something with the countries. This would be uh, my first question. And then I think IoT represents a very, uh, another danger. IoT is um, something that will go in the homes of people and will be uh, controlled by the digital uh, providers of this IoT. And I think this is, this is a dangerous thing, and there's a lot of risk behind this. But I understand that our countries are trying to move as fast as we can to adopt the technologies, but at the same time, we are not fast enough to implement protocols for security because it's new, because it's innovative. So this, my second question would be, uh, what is the vision of risk in relation to IoT, and what is the vision in risk in relation to espionage, digital espionage? Not only the, the Nigerian that will answer, um, and, and if, you, if you have contribution to make to this question, please, can you put off your, yeah, okay. If you have any contribution from your own country to share, you are free to share, but we'll first leave the Nigerian to answer what um, the question. Anyone you can answer, and then he would, um, would uh, allow the West Africa to answer, and then if anybody has anything to say, then we can say it. Thank you. Actually, I'm going to talk on the past question, that is uh, uh, how the Nigeria feels regarding the using the modern technologies uh, to be spied. Um, the Nigeria realizing that um, the first, as I said, uh, Cyber Security um, Act was enacted, and uh, the Office of the National Security Advisor has formed um, a lot of mechanisms for protecting the country and the businesses uh, in respect of uh, spying uh, regarding the digi modern digital technologies. Uh, the Office of the National Security Advisor has formed what is called uh, uh, .ngsat. This .ngsat um, is the computer emergency response um, team that will monitor the cyberspace and uh, um, disseminating the information of all threats to Nigerian businesses and Nigerian government, and also um, 
the Office of the National Security Advisor, in collaboration with international communities, ensure safe, pre um, cyberspace for Nigerian users and businesses and government. And also, the Office of the National Security Advisor is doing a lot in capacity building, enlightenment, and campaign uh, so as uh, to ensure that Nigerian, uh, I mean, uh, Nigerian cyberspace is protected against spying and uh, individual users of the internet uh, are protected. Also, Nigerian government embarked on what is called sectorial computer, uh, computer incidence response teams. Those sectorial computer incidence response teams will prevent sectors of the economy, like telecommunications, uh, banking, uh, and finances, then uh, academy, academia, and um, other small, small businesses. Uh, those uh, sectorial CSAT are also coming on board because recently um, there is an ongoing project on uh, computer incidents response team that will protect uh, the Nigerian telecommunication companies uh, from all threats of the cyberspace. As we are aware, uh, during the ransomware virus, a number of uh, organizations, including telecommunication uh, businesses, were brought uh, to a standstill. So Nigeria is working towards protecting the Nigerian telecommunication companies. And also, there is an ongoing work to protect military and uh, um, police and also um, other organizations like uh, uh, security agencies. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, have you taken the second question as well? No. The, the second question regarding the IoT, honestly, um, Nigeria is not doing much on the IoT security because IoT is a new technology and um, the only thing that is ongoing in Nigeria currently is uh, capacity building in the area of IoT to even understand what is IoT. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you have anything to say in, uh, on his question? Okay, uh, in the same way, I think that um, about the, uh, the emerging technology like IoT and all these uh, artificial intelligence and all these things, uh, most of our countries are not in this, okay. uh, are not really on this, but uh, we can also see some security issues and deals. Uh, like, you know, there's some collaboration with uh, some countries like China or uh, uh, other European countries uh, who bring the, 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 the I mean, computers, uh, yeah, the equipment. So uh, we have to, to, to be more, uh, uh, to, to, to be aware about what we receive. And also uh, we have national security uh, and information um, uh, societies who uh, take a look on this kind of uh, uh, gift or collaboration okay. equipment that we have. So, thank you very much. Um, any other person to share any or question or comment, please, from all our countries? France, um, your your own countries. Um, is there any other country that is here? Mexico, can you now share what what's going on? in Mexico, just like you asked Nigeria, we're throwing it to you. Can you share with others? Yes, of course. Thank you. I can share uh, just the things that come to my knowledge. Um, for example, what a problem we have in Mexico is that the espionage comes from the same government. So when you think of governments defending the possibility of being spied on and you have the government doing the espionage, then you have a big problem because we're relying too much on the governments to defend us from cyber threats. So this would be the, so there was um, a year ago or a year and a half ago, there was big news about how the government was using espionage tools against dissidents of the governments and journalists. And this was a serious thing that has not been solved 
as yet uh, in a government that is leaving now um, its administration. So there was no, no um, response, legal response to this, but it was very widely discussed in, um, in the news outlets of Mexico. So I, I, would, I, would, I would say this at first. Then uh, number two, I feel th there was a, a talk about infrastructure, so I'm going to go to the part of Central America because I have clients in Central America. I do project management. And I can tell you that Huawei, the Chinese company, is becoming a very important actor in creative infrastructure in Central America, which is now going to be, according to me, quite a problem because the United States and now Australia are saying that they're not in accordance with the investment that Huawei is doing in the world because they believe that they're using their technologies to do uh, cyber uh, espionage and other cyber risk activities. Uh, they're gaining a lot of control. What am I seeing in Latin America then, in Central America especially? that they're going to have a problem because a big Mexican company which owns a big, one of the biggest companies, you might have heard of Carlos Slim in American Mobile, he is the one that owns one of the biggest companies, mobile companies, is, is uh, having all this investment from uh, Huawei in the past five years. They're happy with it because Chinese come over and say, we'll give you infrastructure, we'll start doing business, we'll invest. And this is gaining speed. And at the same time, we have the United States and Australia saying this is unacceptable for our country. So what's going to happen to Latin America? In a few years, they're going to be pressured by the United States to stop doing business with the Chinese. And this is going to be a strategic planning uh, risky thing. It's going to be a big challenge for these companies if they don't start planning for this fight right now. So this would be the second thing I want to say. And the third one is I coincide with the fact that in, in, I feel that in Mexico and Central America, we are not taking in consideration or we're not ready uh, to um, uh, tackle the challenges of IoT. We are very slow in adapting the technology so imagine how slow we are in preventing, in risk factoring, in planning for what's going to happen next if we're running only and, and we're running towards trying to implement something we don't know the range it's, it has to have. I think there's a lack of information of benchmarking practices in the world, in Mexico and Central America, that are wide uh, widely known in the country and these countries in Central America. So I feel that this zone in the world is a target. It's a target for risk. It's a target for uh, laboratory work. I mean, being guinea pigs of the world. And I think that this area of the world is at risk also in the business sector because if these policies start becoming a fight between countries, Latin America will only have, will have to oblige because they need the business. So if the United States says you will have to move away from Hawaii, they will have to do this. Put off, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, um, that's a big challenge, even for us in Africa. Um, I think I'm speaking, the, he has yeah, spoken our mind. Okay, okay. Um, Actually, uh, thank you, uh, Mexico, for this comment. Um, the major problem in Africa uh, is lack of finances. That's why it is very difficult to even understand the risk of uh, Chinese equipment vendors. Over the years, what the Chinese does in Africa, or in Nigeria specifically, in as much as you have license for telecommunication services, the Chinese companies will provide equipment for you free. So that's why they have captured all businesses of telecommunication infrastructure in Nigeria for now. 
the major companies of China, ZTE and Huawei, has captured everything. Because they can give free equipment, you can pay them in 10, 20 years, they don't care. So Nigerian comp uh, telecom companies has run away from Alcatel, started running away from Alcatel, Ericsson, and others because uh, not even that, not, not even that you need to finance your, your infrastructure financially with those companies. The projects with those companies tend to be more expensive than the Chinese companies. So, uh, and uh, as you advise, uh, there is a need to, for even the African countries to, to think why are Chinese giving pre equipment to, to our service providers? Almost pre, because you can pay in 10, 20, 30 years, they don't care. So is there, is there no any risk attached to this uh, almost pre-offer? So at least this will give us insight. When we go back, we start advising our government to start thinking another alternative. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is, thank you so much. Anybody online? Any question online? Um, there is no question online. There is no question online. Okay. Um, thank you very much for sharing. And that's the essence of this program, for us to, to exchange best practices. And we have learned new things that we are going home with. And in West Africa, we also have to advise our government, just like uh, the Nigerian um, uh, government, uh, participant is saying. So the, the West African countries also, we need to, to bring, because in Africa as a whole, just like in, China, in, in Mexico, Tanzania has been taken over by the Chinese. Kenya, Chinese. I, I think, I don't know about uh, um, Burkina, Faso. Burkina Faso, the Huawei. Huawei, Burkina Faso. I don't know about Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah, they are there as well in Cote d'Ivoire. So we are in the same, we are at the same level. I don't know whether we all even understand it, not to talk of taking it, and what barriers will it create? And what of the cross, cross barrier uh, uh, transaction, cross-border cross transaction. And with IoT, with the big data he talked about, there are a lot of big data being collected, okay? So what are they, what, what if, if, if they want to bring down a country, they can bring down a country. So we should be able to study, we should be able to build capacity. And when we are going into um, contracts with them, signing contracts of those that are free, free equipment, they should be capacity, local, local content into it. We'll build capacity of our people that will be able, because sometimes you bring the manual is in, in only in Chinese. You can't see another thing, it's only in Chinese. So it, it, it's good we are, talk, we are talking about, we are embarrassing what we don't understand. Please, we'll go back and get ourselves ready to be able to confront what, some of the things that will happen in the, in the nearest future. Thank you. Anybody has any other comment or question? Any other question? Uh, which other? Indonesia? There's nobody from Indonesia? Uh, anybody from, um, from uh, uh, United States? Nobody. Okay. Um, I think we are almost done with our program, but what we are taking away from here is that the new technologies are, are here and we are adopting it. Well, but we should understand how it operates, and we should build capacity, a mass expert of those that will handle these new technologies. Those are the things that we are taking away from this, and we are taking back to our countries to be able to understand the essence of um, all those uh, free lunch. There's nothing like free lunch. There is not free lunch. So we may be confronted in the nearest future with espionage. We should be careful. We should look at the back doors and close those doors they would have entered from. Okay? Okay. Uh, um, um, okay. I think, I think we are supposed to end by 9.30. Okay? But we didn't start on time, and um, we have actually gained from the little time we have worked together. Thank you for coming, and uh, let's do it again next year. Uh, do you have to say anything, Anya? Just congratulations on your great remarks, and thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we are going to the, the, we'll, we'll bring the, what's it called, the message out. 
The message is to build capacity. The message is to understanding. The message is to start from home. The message is to also know the implication, the legal implication and security, and security implications of the new technologies as we embrace it from other countries. Okay? Thank you. All right, thank you.